Hello, my name is Eric Kubiak. I'm here from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas and the UMC Medical Center. Today, we're gonna have a conversation about the use of snap-off compression fully threaded pins in the trauma slash fracture setting. Unique features of the snap-off compression pin that make it stand in distinction to fully threaded K-wires or non-threaded K-wires is that they feature a variable step thread pitch, much like a Herbert screw or a headless compression screw, which gives about two to three millimeters of compression when the pin is placed orthogonal to a fracture plane. This feature makes them uniquely applicable to the upper and lower extremity trauma applications, particularly periarticular fractures. This pin is self-drilling and self-tapping, comes in multiple sizes, and is currently available in titanium. Question will come up. Why this pin? Why the fully threaded compression pin versus a smooth K-wire or a fully threaded Kirchner wire? And I would argue two points. One is the smooth K-wires, we've been frustrated. You have to either hide them behind the plate or do something to keep them from backing out unexpectedly. Number two, fully threaded pins are often frustrating to watch go in because they often distract the fracture site. The fully threaded compression pin has the benefit of A, being resistant to backing out prematurely, and B, actually compressing the fracture site. So let's move forward to a couple of use cases, which I think is sort of ideal use cases. Trauma patients with disrupted soft tissue envelopes or compelling reasons why they use pins, and in this case, the fully threaded compression pin instead of a Kirchner wire. So first case, a 48-year-old female, diabetic, a little bit overweight, single passenger, driver, high-speed MVC with firewall intrusion. And you see this classic big posterior mouth fragment, which we would classify as a B-type pilon or a partial articular injury, consisting largely of a big posterior malleolus fragment and medial malfibular fragment. This injury stands in contradistinction to a classic ankle fracture because this isn't a rotational injury. This is an impaction injury with violence applied to the articular surface of the distal tibia and the talus. Making this case more difficult is the patient's medical condition. She's a little bit big and she has diabetes and the fact that the soft tissue envelope is significantly injured. Our goals, we want to reduce and maintain the reduction of this articular injury through the healing process and try not to sidestep off of that trajectory of you arrive, we begin to improve the quality of your fixation, achieve a reduction, achieve an anatomic fixation of your articular surface, and get that anatomic fixation through the fracture healing process. Medial malleolus in this situation is comminuted. You can see we progress from this displaced talus to a talus which is beginning to be reduced, buttress fix, provisional fixation with smooth K-wires. We don't have a reduction here. We have a close reduction. Improvement at that reduction with a buttress plate, compression screws across the articular surface, obtaining an anatomic fixation of the articular surface with restoration of the talus underneath the tibia where it belongs. We're still left with the medial malleolus. And you can see here the use of the fully threaded compression pins instead of or in lieu of what I would typically use in this situation, which is a small T-plate and multiple 2-4, 2-7 screws, that technique was precluded by the patient's soft tissue envelope, which is compromised both medially and laterally. We've achieved an anatomic restoration of the medial malleolus, addressing the multiple fractures of the medial malleolus with the fully threaded compression pins, as evidenced by the intraoperative radiographs. Confirmed with a postoperative CT about three to four months after the patient's injury, which confirms an anatomic restoration of the distal tibia with maintenance of the reduction of the posterior malleolus fragment and reduction and maintenance of the reduction of the medial malleolus fragments with the multiple fully threaded compression pins, which have done an excellent job of not only providing initial stability, but long-term stability, which led to an uneventful healing of this patient's complicated distal tibia fracture. And again, confirmed by the CT scan cuts through the articular surface of the distal tibia. Case two. So this is a distal tibia fracture, distal third, with associated intraarticular injury. You can see the posterior malleolus and the fibular fracture in attempt to obtain a reduction with a percutaneous place clamp, and then neutralization of that posterior malleolus fracture and compression with the fully threaded compression pins. Little point here, 
When placing these pins percutaneously like we did, you want to follow the notch in the pin until it gets to the articular surface or close to the subchondral surface and then snap it off. I like to leave the pins a little proud in case I ever have to come back and take them out. To the application of the nail, want the pins in place, and again, fully threaded compression pin fixation of this minimally displaced medium alveolus fracture, anatomic restoration of the talus under the distal tibia, and maintenance of that reduction through the healing process. Typically for me, I make people weight bearing at six weeks or earlier with these injuries, and I feel quite comfortable doing that with the fully threaded compression pins. Of note, I like to place these pins before the nail is placed for the theoretical concern that the intraarticular fractures will displace with pressurization of the canal while the nail is placed. So I would stress, when identified, distal articular injuries associated with tibia shaft injuries, as described by Rothberg in the RideFast study, it's really important to provide fixation, anatomic fixation of those intraarticular fragments prior to pressurization of the canal with placement of the nail to prevent residual displacement. Because when this displacement occurs after placement of the nail, it often requires removal of the nail, cleaning of the fracture, and then reapplication, which is a tedious process and unnecessarily provides longer duration or exposure to surgery for the patient. And you can see here, at one year, the fractures have healed predictably and reliably. The articular surface is maintained in its anatomic reduction with an excellent fixation of the medial malleolus and posterior malleolus provided by the fully threaded compression pits. In conclusion, why snap off compression fully threaded pins? And I would say, why not? In those use situations where you might be thinking about using a smooth stymen pin or a fully threaded stymen pin, this implant should be strongly considered. So it's unlikely to migrate and provides excellent compression, uh, particularly across simple articular fractures.